I'm standing here in the surprise-filled world of Rathnir, where unsuspecting players dug up the skeleton of an ancient beast, uncovered the cursed tomb of a tribal king, and went through an Indiana Jones-type adventure for the history books. This is the story of brave archaeologists on the Stoneworks Minecraft server. I want you to join our server at the IP play.stoneworks.gg so you can explore Minecraft history for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe, or I will make sure future archaeologists are the first to find your remains. It all started with this ordinary player here, Kestra114, on a little beach peninsula in the desert nation of Alamein. She dug what she thought to be an innocuous mine down the desert sandstone and rock until... Huh? A bone block down here? This piqued her interest, and she started digging around it, finding a large rib bone buried in the stone. Excited with her discovery, she called to her friends in chat, like Dragon Tooth Jones, Inferno Games, Evane, Zenthic, and Endorus Cuddlecoy, showed up to help her excavate. Like proper paleontologists, they carefully dug around the fossil, but a few minor cavens collapsed from above, so they set up support beams to keep everything intact. All was going well, and they just started to uncover the full find when one of them noticed that they felt a little sickly, cursed by a nearby bad and dangerous omen. But just then, a little bit of the ground in the dig site gave way. Here, there was a skull in some rudimentary cave paintings. Right next to it, they found an ancient, almost broken spear with unexplainable enchantments on it. They looked at it in wonder, speculating about an ancient warrior that killed this giant beast and left its fossil here. Some of them left for a bit and did some research, reading the old geological histories written by Rathnir's famous paleontologists, players Jurassic Park Rex and Paleozoe. Their research yielded that this spear may have belonged to an old complex of warlike tribal nomads called the Zanjin Culture. They existed over 10,000 years ago, at the end of Rathmir's last ice age. They also pinned down that this giant fossil was likely the remains of a cave digger sloth. This would explain how such an animal was found deep down in hard stone. The museum in the city of Flumar has a reconstruction of a small one, and it looks just like this. These were exciting finds. They would probably make them famous to the scientific community of Rathnir. But just then, the dangerous omen reared its head again. Everyone felt hauntedly sick, and they heard strange sounds, undead moans, and crackling skeleton bones. While they were cleaning up the edges of the dig site, a deep hole emerged in the ground, one that Inferno accidentally jumped down into. Down here was an elaborate tomb, cave paintings on the wall, a beat-up coffin of oxidized copper, an old tattered book, and a skeleton decorated in gold plate mail with symbols carved into its skull. This must be the Zanjin warrior who owned that spear and killed the beast. As our brave scientists crowded down in this little burial chamber, they heard ominous noises of undead boars. They panicked. Dragon Tooth Jones went, go, 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 get out of here! And they fled back up to the fossil site. They speculated what this was and how dangerous it might be. Some thought that their minds were just going crazy. Others thought it was old magic. Others thought it was the work of ghosts and gods. So, they secured the entrance down to the burial chamber with iron bars and trap doors. The message was clear. Something very old here was becoming very dangerous. But they braved going down there in little groups several more times, and some new scientists from outside came and joined them. The strange noises filled their ears once again, but they worked up their courage, and they opened up the coffin. At the feet of the warrior was an old chest holding several glowing artifacts, god apples, ancient debris, a golden sword enchanted with channeling, and a totem with markings to be used by a shaman healer. But when they reached in to grab the rare artifacts, they were hit with poison and they were withered away. The player Sopira got stuck in the chamber due to faulty trap doors, and she was heavily afflicted with the curse, what they started to call the virus. The ladder down to the burial chamber repelled anyone with a gene for self-preservation. They built a little room with a warm fire, food, and potions to keep them safe, all while the old Zanjin warrior lay below. The chamber acted increasingly strangely, with flashing purple bursts of light, undead enemies spawning above to harass them, and more and more scientists being plagued with the ghostly virus. But then, Dragon Tooth Jones had enough. He talked with the group, and they all agreed that they needed to kill the malevolent presence below. 
he grabbed his best armor and the old Zanjin spear, hoping that it would be imbued with something that could kill the ghost. They got doctors on site, and so Dragontooth Jones looked back at his colleagues, and as he thought of braving the dangers down there, his mind lingered on his wife. Should he be proven unable to beat the spirit, he asked his friends to tell his wife Bridget that he loved her. Dragon descended into the chamber. He told off the lifeless body beneath and began stabbing at its skull. The spirit shrieked and lashed out, blinding everyone nearby and striking Dragon with a powerful plague. He stood his ground as his life started fading away, but kept stabbing at the skull with all his strength. The players screamed for him to come back up, but he ignored them and kept fighting. But eventually, one of the doctors dropped down a bucket of milk, and on the brink of death, he chugged them down, and he saved himself. He then climbed back up the ladder, only to find his wife Bridget standing there, angry, with tears in her eyes. So, stabbing the corpse did not kill the spirit. But at least they knew now that the doctor's potions and milk cures worked against its attacks. A few times, people ventured back down there, trying to hit the spirit, talk to it, or look around its tomb. But it always ended up the same. Violent illness and lots and lots of pain. Dragontooth Jones and the others pondered over this, and he remembered something vital. The spirit only lashed out at first when they tried to open the chest and reach for its artifacts. So, he went down into the burial chamber. His wife Bridget followed right behind him, and he protested. He said, get back up there. But she refused and said, if he's going down there, she's going down there. They sat in the chamber. First, he tried to strike at the body again with a massive netherite war scythe. But no luck. Only poison and wither effects again to be cured by the milk. After being down there for a while with his wife, he said, you know what? Screw it. And he threw open the chest and he scooped up all the artifacts and the spirit struck them with the worst violence yet. He yelled to Bridget, honey, go, go, go. They got back up right in time for the doctor to heal them and they barely survived. But the spirit was angry. These foolish archeologists came down to his burial site, stabbed at his head with his own spear from his people and disrespectfully desecrated his tomb. He sat and watched what came next. Bridget applied her own skills of magical blacksmithing to the situation. She thought that if they couldn't kill the spirit with his own spear or a powerful scythe, she could forge the loot into a powerful weapon that could break the veil and annihilate it for good. So she started her blacksmithing ritual, placing the old Zanjin spear on top as a final ingredient. She awaited for the ritual to morph them all together when something invisible grabbed the spear. Unknown to her, the mighty spirit-killing weapon was, in fact, forged, but it wasn't presented to Bridget. The spirit of the Zanjin tribal king wielded it, and with a furious vengeance, he began the destruction of his tomb. Explosions rocked the ground around the scientists. They looked around, trying to see what was happening. The quickest among them fled to the surface, but others were flung and dropped as the dig site collapsed. Fireballs snaked around, the safe room exploded from within, the entire dig site, the fossil, the tomb, the artifacts, the body, all detonated in a massive fireball. Only a giant crater was left. Several of the scientists were caught in the blasts and killed, including Kestra 114, who just wanted to dig up some bones, who unknowingly started this whole debacle. Dragontooth Jones and Bridget barely survived as they climbed up the waterfalls that filled the crater. But the discoveries were gone, destroyed by the warrior king who once killed the mighty beast. Such an event would become infamous in Rathnir's scientific community. The spirits have no sympathy for disrespect and desecration of their people's graves and tombs. So when you're on Rathnir and Eldum, make sure to take great care when you start seeing supernatural things around you. for you, we just started a brand new seasonal world full of opportunity to make your own new nations, religions, and discoveries in Tremon's Season 1, The World of Akananda. Like and subscribe and join us to make Minecraft YouTube history at play.stoneworks.gg. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.